Exercise 4G, questions 1 through 7. Question 1, find the gradient of a line which is parallel to each line with the given equation. If it's parallel, then M1 must equal M2. So the two slopes equal each other. So the slope here is minus 1, so that M equals minus 1. So the gradient of a line which is parallel to that line would have a slope of minus 1. X equals 7, well the, the slope is undefined, but this is a vertical line. All points along the line equal 7, so it's parallel to the y-axis. C, I'm going to rearrange this into y equals 1 third x minus 5 on 3, so the gradient of a line which is parallel to this line must have a gradient of 1 on 3. D, going to expand this and we've got y equals minus 2 on 5 x plus 2 on 5. The gradient is minus 2 on 5. So the gradient of a line which is parallel to this must also have the same gradient. So the gradient of the line that's parallel to this would be have it would have a gradient of minus 2 on 5. And the answer's there. Question 2. Find the gradient of a line which is perpendicular to each of the following lines. Okay, this comes from the book. That's the important part here. M1 equals minus 1 on M2. It's a negative and inverse. If you've got that relationship between the slopes of the lines, they're perpendicular. So we can check that. First one is y equals minus 3x plus 11. So the gradient of a line which is perpendicular to that, if that's M1 is minus 3, then M2, using this, cross multiply, M2 is equal to minus 1 on M1. So it's minus 1 over m1, which is minus 3, and that equals 1 third. So 1 over 3. That's the gradient of a line that's perpendicular to a line with a gradient of minus 3. Over here, we're going to rearrange it. We've got y equals x on 8, which is equal to 1 8 x. m is 1 on 8. The relationship is here. m2, right? m1 equals minus 1 on m2, or m2 equals minus 1 on m1. So M2 is minus 1 on M1. That's minus 1 over 1 over 8. When you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So it's minus 1 times 8 on 1, which equals minus 8. So the gradient of a line which is perpendicular to this line has a gradient of minus 8. This one, Y equals minus 3. That's a horizontal line with a slope of 0. So... A line that's perpendicular to a horizontal line would be a vertical line. A vertical line has a slope which is undefined, and that's we can still use the same relationship here. M1 equals minus 1 on M2, or M2 equals minus 1 on M1. So M2 equals minus 1 divided by 0, and we know that's undefined. D, we're going to expand this and move the uh, denominator here under each term. So we've got Y equals 2 on 3X, minus 2 on 3. M1, this one, is 2 on 3. M2 equals minus 1 on M1. So that's M2 equals minus 1 on 2 thirds. If you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So that's minus 1 times 3 on 2, which is minus 3 on 2. And that is the gradient of the line that is perpendicular to this line. Question 3. L1 and L2 are the trajectories of two ships moving in straight lines. Determine whether the ship's trajectories are perpendicular, parallel, or neither. A. Line 1 passes through these two points, and line 2 passes through these two points. Let's look at line 1 first. We're going to use this point and that point. I've labeled them at the top x1, y1, and x2, y2. What we need to do is to find, we really need to find the gradients first. So let's find the gradients. The gradients of this line, which we'll call M1, the gradient of this line, which we'll call M1, is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, which is minus 7 minus minus 4 over minus 1 minus 0. And that resolves itself down to minus 7 plus 4 over minus 1, which is 3, because the top line is minus 3, the bottom line is minus 1, so that's 3. Now we check the second line, and we do the same here. So we're using this point, 3, 0, and minus 3, 2. We find the gradient... The gradient's minus 1 on 3. We use this relationship, m1 equals minus 1 on m2 if they are perpendicular. And we can see here that if this is m2, m2 does equal minus 1 over m1 because m1 is 3. 
so therefore they are perpendicular, A. B, line 1 has this equation, and line 2 has this equation. First step is to turn it into y equals mx plus b. Do the same over here. We end up with y equals 1 quarter x minus 3 on 2. And over here, 1 quarter x plus 2.75. The slope of the first uh, line is 1 on 4. The slope of the second line is 1 on 4. They have the same slope, m1 equals m2. Therefore, they are parallel. These two lines are parallel. Number C, line L1 has that equation and line L2 has this equation. Line L1 is clear that the slope is minus 2 on 5. We have to rearrange this into y equals mx plus b and we get y equals 3x minus 12. m2 equals 3. m1 does not equal m2, so they're not parallel. m1 does not equal minus 1 over m2, so they're not perpendicular. So the choice is neither. Question four, determine whether the straight air routes with equations of this and this are intersecting or not. If they are intersecting, find the point of intersection. Well, equation one, we're going to rearrange it into y equals mx plus b, and we can see that the slope of the gradient, the slope of that is two. Equation two, it's just x equals minus five. This is a vertical line parallel to the y-axis. M2 is undefined and it's parallel to the y-axis. Uh, M1 does not equal M2, therefore the lines intersect. Okay, parallel lines don't intersect, so if they equal each other, they would not intersect. Un unless they're on top of each other. If they had actually exactly the same uh, gradient, they could be the same line, for example, x equals minus five and x equals minus five. I mean, that's basically one line, but there could be one line on top of another line, they would be parallel, they would have the same slope. But in this case, we've got a slope of 2 and a slope of minus 5. They're different slopes, they don't uh, equal each other, therefore the lines do intersect. They must intersect, right? This one here goes straight up and down, this one goes at an angle like that, so they're going to cross somewhere. The point of intersection is where equation 1 and equation 2 intersect, and we're going to call that xy, that point. It is one point. Because x equals minus 5, it, x must equal minus 5, because the vertical line only has a value of x equals minus 5. Along this line, x is always minus 5, therefore the point of intersection can be rewritten as minus 5y. We know more. We don't have, just have this one. We know that x must be minus 5. We have to find y. Well, we can use this relationship here that we have. So we put our x into here. To find y, put x equals minus 5 into equation 1. That's this one here. So we've got y equals 2 times minus 5 plus 6. That resolves to y equals minus 4. Therefore, the point of intersection is minus 5 and minus 4. 5. A ski resort is building two parallel straight ski slopes for children. One of them has a gradient of one third. The other ski slope will pass through this these two points find the value of s. Well, they've told us it's parallel. If it's parallel, that means they both have the same slope. Equation of the ski slope 1 is y equals one third x plus b because they told the gradient is one third. Okay, that's what we know. But we do know the gradient is one on three. The gradient of ski slope 2, we can use the gradient formula we have y2 minus y1 on x2 minus x1 when we're given two points. So I've got minus 5 minus minus 3. Okay, and then here we have s minus 2 because it's s minus 2 on the bottom and that becomes m2 equals minus 2 on s minus 2. We know that m1 equals m2 because it's parallel. Because ski slope 2 is parallel, to ski slope 1, m1 equals m2 equals a third, therefore 1 third equals this, which is minus 2 over s minus 2, and we solve for s, and we find that s equals minus 4, and that's the answer. Question 6, a straight connecting street segment is built perpendicular to an existing street with equation y equals 2 on 7 x plus 3. Determine the equation of the line of the new street segment which passes through this point. If it's perpendicular, and we know the, the slope of that, 
Then we know that the negative inverse will be the slope of the perpendicular line, remembering that m1 equals minus 1 on m2. So the existing street equation is that. Straight connecting street segment is perpendicular to the existing street. Use m1 equals minus 1 on m2. Therefore, if m1 equals 2 on 7, then m2 must equal minus 7 on 2. Right, it's the inverse and it's minus. Now we use our point gradient form because they gave us one point. We've got my, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We put in y1 here, which is minus 0 0.2. We put in, be careful here, we've got minus x1, so it's minus times minus 1. And the m we're going to use is this one, minus 7 on 2. And that comes down to minus 7 on 2x minus 37 on 10. And that's that. Great. Question 7. A fish farm builds a breeding basin in the form of a quadrilateral A, B, C, D with A that, B is this, C is that, and D is that with those coordinate points. Show that the quadrilateral A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Well, I've plotted those on here. And we can see it, is, it looks like a parallelogram. What we have to confirm is that that gradient and this gradient are equal and that gradient and that gradient are equal. So sides AD and BC, that's AD and BC, must be parallel. They would have the same gradient. And sides DC and AB must be parallel. We'll have to confirm that they have the same gradient. Right? That's for it to be a parallelogram. It did show that it is. Check the gradients. We're going to check AD. AD is M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. We go straight down here and we find it equals 1. We then find the gradient for BC using these coordinate points, and that's also 1. If M1 equals M2, they must be parallel. We do the same with DC and AB. For DC, again, Y2 minus Y1, X2 minus X1. And we've got 1 on 5. And then for AB, this one here, we use these coordinate points and we've got y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and we get 1 on 5. And then we have m1 equals m2 or in this case m3 equals m4 and therefore the segment DC is parallel to AB. Therefore, the quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram. And I've included this up here. That's the uh, characteristics of a parallelogram. The opposite sides are equal in length and opposite angles are equal in length, and the opposite sides are parallel. I mean, that's the key point we're doing here because we're talking about gradients. Opposite sides are parallel. Great.